Today, Dr. Zoon demonstrates techniques for finishing your CO2 dragster using sanding sealer, acrylic paints, spray paints, and even decals. All this and more today on Dr. Zoon. Oh, hi kids. I'm just doing a little finishing up of my sanding on my dragsters, trying to get out all the imperfections in the wood from the production process. And it looks like I'm just about ready to start finishing this dragster. And that's what this videotape today is about, is finishing your dragster. That is putting on the finishing touches, the paint and the decals and all those things which will make your dragster really look nice. Before you ever start the finishing process on your dragster, that is adding sanding sealer or spray paint, be sure that you check the specifications for each competition that you may be going to. For instance, the mass of the dragster, be sure and include the body of the dragster, straw, axles, wheels, screw eyes, and washers. Also be sure to check the wheelbase, the overall length of the dragster, the overall width of the dragster, and any other specifications that there are for your competition. This will keep you out of trouble and make your race day very successful. Once we've removed all the imperfections by sanding, we want to take a tack cloth or a piece of cheesecloth and go over the entire surface of the dragster, removing any sawdust that we may have created and left on the surface of the dragster. Now, I'm going to be working on two dragsters today. One is out of balsa wood, which is the one I have here. The other, which I just did, was our basswood dragster. We're going to finish both of these, one using spray paint and the other using acrylic paints. But the first step, as you see here, is to remove all the sawdust with the tack cloth. You can see the amount of sawdust that we removed from the dragster, and it probably looked like it was pretty clean before you started. Once we've removed all the sawdust with our tack cloth, the next step in the process is to seal the wood with a sanding sealer or wood sealer. We'll use a solution like this. We'll paint it on with a brush all over the surface of the dragster. To aid the process, we're going to use a dragster paint stand. We'll place our dragster on the paint plug in the stand, which allows us to rotate the dragster and make it easy to apply the sanding sealer. For one of the dragsters, we're going to use a standard paintbrush with sable bristles. We'll open up our wood sealer and dip the brush in it and begin covering the dragster with the sanding sealer. You need to put on a level, consistent coat of sanding sealer over the entire surface of the dragster. Always try to brush in one direction as you're applying the paint or the sealer, either one. We're doing the top surface of the dragster now. We'll continue on around the dragster doing the sides and the bottom as well. So we're finishing up adding sanding sealer to our balsa dragster. And now we're ready to proceed to the basswood dragster. With our basswood dragster, we're going to apply the sanding sealer with a foam brush. We'll pour a little of the sanding sealer into the lid so the foam brush will go into it. Foam brushes must be used with non-lacquer-based sanding sealers. So consult your instructor as to whether you can use a foam brush or not. 
Like with the paintbrush, you simply apply the sanding sealer in smooth strokes. The foam brush will hold more sealer so you can do more area at one time. So add the very last of the sanding sealer to the basswood dragster, making sure that we don't have any runs. And there we are. We've finished applying the sanding sealer to each of our dragsters, so now we're going to wait about a half an hour to two hours, depending upon the variety of sanding sealer you used. So let's let these things dry, and then we'll go from there. We've allowed the sanding sealer to dry now, so we're ready to sand the dragsters. The action of the sanding sealer is to seal the wood and raise the grain on it. Here you can see some grain that has stood up due to the sanding sealer. We're going to sand this wood as well as the rest of the entire body down with a 320 grit to 420 grit sandpaper. Let's go ahead and sand the entire body of the dragster. Once we've sanded the dragster down so that we have a smooth surface once again, we're ready to take our tack cloth and wipe off any dust that we created with the sandpaper. This is very important because we don't want pieces left from this sanding left on the dragster. Now we're ready to do our second dragster, the basswood dragster, and we'll go ahead and sand it down. Once we have the basswood dragster completely sanded until we're satisfied with the smoothness of it, then we're ready again to take our tack cloth, wipe off any sawdust or any dust from the sanding, which will then show up on our cloth. And we're ready once again to recoat our dragsters with the sanding sealer. I'm going to go ahead and apply the sanding sealer to both of these dragsters and let them dry before we proceed with the rest of the video. We want to be sure after the sanding sealer is dried to sand it as smooth as we can. You'll need to take special precautions sanding inside radiuses. They will be difficult to sand, but you must get them smooth. Once you have it smooth, take your tack cloth and wipe it down to remove any of the sanding that you just did so that we have a clean car to paint. We're going to paint this one with a, an acrylic paint, and we're going to brush it on. We want to brush it in basically the same direction as much as is possible, and I prefer to brush it from the front to the back. So I'm going to go ahead and begin painting by dipping my paint my paint brush in the paint and starting at the front, smooth the paint out, being careful to try to eliminate as many brush strokes as possible. I've finished the first coat of our blue acrylic paint on our balsa dragster and we're ready to set this aside now so that it can dry. I was sure to wash out my brush with water so that the paint would not dry in it. We've allowed our blue acrylic paint to dry for about an hour now, so it's time to recoat with another coat of blue acrylic paint. 
So we'll take our paintbrush, which we've cleaned out since then, and once again begin painting, starting with the front of the car and making our paint strokes as smooth as possible once again will cover the entire body of the dragster. After we've allowed the sanding sealer to dry on our basswood dragster, we want to sand it smooth very, very carefully, paying close attention again to inside radiuses. Make sure these are very well sanded and very smooth and sand the entire dragster body. Once you have it to perfection, you'll want to use your tack cloth and again wipe off any particles that you may have created during your sanding. This will ensure a nice, smooth finish. For our basswood dragster, we're going to use spray paint to paint the dragster. Spray paint must be used in a well-ventilated area, and if possible, use a spray booth such as this one to help trap the vapors. Consult with your instructor before spray painting in the classroom. When spray painting, you'll want to depress the button completely as you spray, and the paint will come out of this orifice right here. There are a couple different ways that we can hold the dragster while we spray paint it. One way is to take a paint plug or a three-quarter inch dowel and insert it in the back of the dragster, holding it like that. Using it within our spray booth or in an area designated by your instructor, you would then apply the paint to the dragster like this. Today, however, I'm going to use the Pitsco dragster paint stand to hold my dragster as I paint it. We'll put the dragster on the paint plug and then place the dragster paint stand inside our spray booth like this. Our motion for spray painting will be to depress the valve and then move the can across the body of the dragster like this. Be careful not to use too much paint at one time or it will run. Once we have the dragster painted on one side, we'll rotate it and do the same process on the next side. And there we have the first coat of spray paint on our dragster. We've let our coat of spray paint dry for 15 or 20 minutes now, so it's time to recoat with the second thin coat. We need to be sure and recoat within an hour, or we may get wrinkling or lifting of the previously painted surface. Let's go ahead and put the second coat of our red paint on now. I went ahead and gave our red car a third coat of spray paint, and it's really beginning to look pretty good. As you can see, our dragster now has a nice coat of red paint all over it, and it's beginning to get a very nice shine to it as well. But we have one step left in the process. For our last step in the finishing process, we're going to add two or three coats of clear top coat, which is a lacquer enamel, over our red paint. So we'll go ahead and use this just like spray paint. We'll use our strokes across. We'll turn our dragster and stroke across again. We'll need to be careful because it won't be as obvious where we're spraying as we go because there's no color in it. Let's go ahead and add our top coat now.
I've finished adding the second coat of acrylic paint to our balsa dragster and it's dry now and we're ready for the final step which will be to add a couple coats of top coat which is a clear lacquer finish. Let's go ahead and put it in the spray booth and we'll use the clear lacquer spray just like we would spray paint using very smooth strokes across the dragster. We want to be sure not to add too much or we'll get runs. We can add two or three coats of this which will be much better than adding one heavy coat. We'll let this dry for about 15 minutes before we apply any more coats. We've added two to three coats of clear coat to each of our dragsters, and now let's take a look at how they look. Notice with the blue dragster that before it had a dull finish, and after two to three coats of clear coat, now it has a very glossy finish. Now is the time that we can add decals or other decorations to the dragster. There's a number of different decals available, pinstripes and different objects. I've cut out a Pitsco logo that will apply to the red dragster. To apply the decal, we simply peel the back off of the decal and carefully position the decal where we want it on the dragster and then smooth it down. That finishes up our dragster. Next time, we'll add the wheels and axles and do some testing on our dragster. Until then, see you real soon.